Well, well, well. The Lakers are above 500. What a pleasant surprise. And yes, they beat the Charlotte Hornets 120 to 101. And yes, your boy was in Atlanta on Sunday, so did not watch the game. Honestly, watched a couple of highlights here and there, but you know what speaks to me a lot about this game is the state of two organizations and where they are. The Charlotte Hornets have been terrible for years. And now you get Michael Jordan, greatest player of all time. I don't really want to have this discussion today, so let's just leave that premise at that. Michael Jordan, the greatest basketball player of all time, is one of the worst fucking team owners in NBA history. Ever. He's awful. He can't manage contracts. Hey, you have one of your best players in team history in Kemba Walker. What are you going to do? Just let him walk away. Bye. He's playing for the Boston Celtics now. And who do you sign instead? Terry Rozier. Yeah? Yeah, you think that's your solution? Cody Zeller. Bridges. Uh, the, the, this is your solution? I mean, credit to those guys. They balled out. They got points on the board. They look fantastic all around the box scores. But what is the essence of this team? What is the whole idea of the Charlotte Hornets? Like, what is your goal here? Like, you're not going to tank, are you? Like, well, you can't even fucking scout. Sorry, but fuck. It, it, just every time you look at the Charlotte Hornets, like, why are you the way that you are? Michael! And I'm just, I'm just being a yelly little bitch right now. I know. I know I am. I know I am. And I know I, and there's going to be a lot of Charlotte fans who might just come across this shit and be like, Oh, what's this fat LA fuck complaining about? Ah, his team's over 500 for the first time in God knows how long. And now he's, you know, getting all chest beating in the fucking air. Like, no, it's, it's not that. It's just administrative incompetence destroys franchises. Look at the Charlotte Hornets. It's awful. And yes, the Lakers went through that for the last year or two. And we are now at this point of, all right, we have sold the farm. All the animals are gone. Our, our fucking barn's gone. I mean, we might have to sell our daughter. But shit, something is going to have a, something has to give. Something's got to be coming back to us. And thank God it is. Anthony Davis, LeBron James... And the surprising third name, Dwight Howard. You know what, boys and girls? I genuinely can't believe how motivated, how driven, how tenacious Dwight Howard has been since he's come back. And I'm not going to lie to you. Each and every game I see Dwight play, my negative opinion about him starts to slowly and marginally fade away. Yes, there's still that hurt, that angst against him for years back. But I got to tell you, man, I'm loving this new Dwight. I love seeing this Dwight. Just unbelievable. I hope this guy keeps it going. I'm cheering for you, dude. I mean, you're with the Lakers. You're back, you're back at it. And these three guys, Anthony Davis, LeBron James, Dwight Howard, on the day, all post-double doubles. No problem. That ain't no problem. That ain't no problem. No problem. And it's it's crazy because all the pieces are seemingly working. Now, granted, not the best team. Like, I bitched about for like a minute and a half or two minutes. But that cohesiveness is slowly but surely coming through, right? Although, I, I will say, LeBron James on point guard, I don't think it's a long-term viable option. I think for him, positionally, he has a generally harder time against other point guards, much smaller than him, much faster than him, to be quite frank. Um, we need a better long-term option in that point guard position. Obviously, your boy would ob absolutely recommend Alex Caruso, the man himself, the god himself, the guy who gets the thirst look from Rihanna. Rihanna wants that white chocolate dick all over, baby. All over. You know that shit. And respect to Alex Caruso. 
This a man's a beast. He's a stud. He deserves a chance to be in that starting point guard position. And I, I know, I know. The, the thought process right now, I believe, for Frank Vogel is probably going to be, all right, we're going to wait until Rajon comes back fully, 100%. We're going to have our point guard depth, and we're going to interchangeable parts here and there. Now, how long until another team just comes knocking and we get our asses kicked uh, because we're playing like that? A speedy point guard uh, just zipping on through. I don't know. I don't know. But within the first three games and within this last game, of course, it's looked all right. It's looked all right because defensively we, we've looked better all around. We looked, we looked better all around on defense and of course, of course, it's anchored by Anthony Davis, the man himself, the man who chose to come to the Lakers. I mean, of course, he got traded and there's a whole fucking thing about that. But hey, he's with the Lakers now. He's with the Lakers. And God damn it, if he is, if he is just, oh my God, it's just, it's just so beautiful. I, every time I watch Anthony Davis, I just think, oh God, you can't be real. You're a fucking unicorn. You can't be real. I remember watching him in New Orleans, just like, oh my God, this guy's real. He's real. He's real. 29 points, 14 rebounds, 3 assists, 1 steal, 3 blocks. You know, I could read stats all day. I can. I, it's not hard. Any idiot can do it. Any idiot can do it. But right now, the whole thing that we have to keep in mind is this, boys and girls. Yes, the Lakers are 2-1. and one. We're above 500. However, first three games. Uh... The opponents that we've gone against, Utah Jazz, relatively speaking, decent. Uh, the Clippers, probably the best in the Western Conference right now. And the Charlotte Hornets, arguably one of the worst teams in the NBA. Not the most wide sample sizes. Right? It's not the most wide sample size, but right now we're going to just take the wins, be happy about it. And hey, boys and girls, tonight, tonight at the Staples Center. You already know. NBA action is happening and again. The Los Angeles Lakers will take on the Memphis Grizzlies. And yes, tonight I will be home here in beautiful Las Vegas. And we'll be watching this game in full and giving you folks a review after the game. So there is the most yelliest, non-descriptive review for the Lakers. You're welcome. Uh, follow me at the Sky Lounge and all the links in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe for more daily contents. Ah, fuck off.